What's up, YouTube? I'm excited to do this video because a commonly asked question that I get, especially over the last couple of months, is um, and sh and shout out to Charles. I think he asked this the, the the best way, right? I don't remember if he asked this in a private conversation or if he asked it in our live debate, but essentially what he said was. If there are so few of the elites and 8 billion, and I'm paraphrasing, he didn't exactly word it this way, but this is how everybody essentially asks it, right? If there's 8 billion people on the planet and so few of the elite, like you say that almost nobody knows the absolute truth, right? How the fuck do they maintain their power? And, you know, some people even go further to ask, well, is everybody in on the conspiracy? Like, what's going on? And... I was surprised because this is a video that has 18 million views and you guys know the general rule of thumb is that if it's popular, it's not telling you the truth. Now this guy doesn't say everything obviously, but I was surprised a video this popular essentially nails it down near perfectly. Like the inconsistencies and the little bit of incorrect details that he does put in the video it's so minute that it doesn't even derail from the entire point. So I was surprised. So without further ado, we're going to break down how the elite managed to maintain their power, you know, for so long and, you know, in a manner that seems so absolute. Do you want to rule? Do you see the problems in your country and know how to fix them? If only you had the power to do so. Well, you've come to the right place. But before we begin this lesson in political power, ask yourself, why don't rulers see as clearly as you, instead acting in such selfish, self-destructive, short-sighted ways? Are they stupid, these most powerful people in the It's funny because this is actually, this, this, this astonishes me, right? Because this is actually what regular people say, right? Because they don't understand why the people who rule over them do what they do regular people again it's the dunning kruger effect right go look that up people assume that the people that they gave the power to that the, the, the people that they voluntarily let rule over them they assume that these guys are stupid when it's like if they're stupid why do you let them rule over you in the first place you can't be an idiot and get to that but i, I digress let's continue the world or is it something else? The throne looks omnipotent from afar, but it is not as it seems. Take the throne to act and the throne acts upon you. Accept that or turn back now before we discuss the rules for rulers. No matter how bright And what I like about what he's about, I also like how they throw reference to the source there. Because, I mean, you know, a channel with 6 million subscribers, they already know all power comes from source. All knowledge comes from source. But his title in is slightly incorrect. There is no such thing as, well, I mean, there is no such thing as a single entity dictatorship. For the most part, it's usually an oligarchy meaning multiple people play the power game, it, 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 um, so you could say. He's going to explain it thoroughly, but, you know, just so people don't get the misconception, it's not one specific person making all the decisions, and he's going to break it down. Right, the reason. Any Sun King, no man rules alone. A king can't build roads alone, can't enforce laws alone, can't defend the nation or himself alone. The power of a king is not to act, but to get others to act on his behalf, using the treasure in his vaults. A king in modern times, see, money is a tool, a means to an end, right? The elite understand this, right? Money is not resources, but money can be used as a means to get resources. Money can be used as a means to get people to work and refine natural resources into more specific tools that they can use to further maintain their power. So he specifically talks about money and the treasury in this video, but I want you guys to broaden your horizons and understand that there's many ways that 
a person in a position of power may keep their keys loyal. And he's about to explain what keys are in a second. King needs an army and someone to run it, treasure and someone to collect it, law and someone to enforce it. The individuals needed to make the necessary things happen are the king. And pay careful attention to all of the source references you see from the hats to the backgrounds to the crowns. Just, I mean, the people that have the knowledge, they understand where to get the knowledge from. Are the king's keys to power. All the changes you wish to make are but thoughts in your head if the keys will not follow your commands. In a dictatorship where might makes right, the number of keys to power is small, perhaps only a dozen general. I like how there's 12 keys in one, uh, but I'm not going to get into that. So yeah, essentially, the ruling elites, in order for them to maintain their power, there's people below them that they have to keep loyal to them, because all they're doing, right, they're the ones with the hands, and their keys are the, are the strings connected to the other keys, which are the puppets. Okay, it's all a game, it's all a power game. Like I was explaining to my boy Charles, you know, the ruling elite, they're just big nerds really that understand the game. And when you understand the ultimate game, natural law, games like this become child's play, right? But essentially, it doesn't matter if it's one, three, 13, or 39, right? However many people there is at the absolute top, essentially what they're doing is, they have their vision in mind and they delegate what they want done to their keys on the lower levels because their keys on the lower levels are the ones that actually interact with the masses as a whole. This is why you never see who actually has the power and you only see their puppets because those that actually have the power are invisible to people like you and they're only visible to the people who are directly getting their orders from them, if, if that makes sense. It's, it's all a game. People got this misconception that a king does whatever he wants, that an emperor does whatever he wants. Anybody who's ever played Crusader Kings 2 or 3, you know that's not true. You know that if you don't keep your dukes, your keys, happy, then you're not going to be the king for very long. Because <laughs> they'll band together and turn on you. So generals, bureaucrats, and regional leaders. Sway them to your side and the power to rule is yours, but never forget, displease them and they will replace you. Now all countries lie on a spectrum, from those where the ruler needs few key supporters to those where the ruler needs many. This foundation of power is why countries are different. Another source reference, I love it. Yeah, many keys or few, the rules are the same. First, get the key supporters on your side. With them, you have the power to act. You have everything. Without them, you have nothing. Now, in order to keep those keys to power, you must second control the treasure. You must make sure your treasure is raised and distributed to you. In fact, I'm going to make this easy for y'all. Replace treasury with resources. In order to keep your keys loyal to you, they have to have some incentive to be loyal to you. So rather it's money, rather it's security, rather it's resources. If you're going to be the, the, the guy that has the highest authority, then these people need some incentive to follow your orders. What are you going to do for me? What are you going to do for my family? What are you going to do to ensure me that after I follow your orders, you won't just get rid of me, right? So when you think treasury, think all these things, security, resources, longevity, etc., etc., etc. For all your hard work and to the keys needed to keep your position. This is your true work as a ruler, figuring out how best to raise and distribute resources so as not to topple the house of cards upon which your throne sits. Now you, aspiring benevolent dictator, may want to help your citizens, but your control of the treasure is what 
don't know. Are we having technical difficulties here? The fuck's going on? Come Do on, internet! Don't don't rule. fail on me while I'm making a video. Dare man. may want to help your citizens, citizens. but your control of the treasure is what attracts rivals. So you must keep those keys loyal. But there's only so much treasure in your vaults, so much wealth your kingdom produces. So beware! Every bit of treasure spent on citizens is treasure not spent on loyalty. Thus doing the right thing, spending the wealth of the nation on the citizens of the nation, hands a tool of power acquisition to your rivals. Treasure poured into roads and universities and hospitals is treasure a rival can promise to key supporters if only they switch sides. But now so those of y'all that wonder stuff like, oh, why don't the elites, you know, help out the homeless people? There's enough homes for the homeless people. Or why don't the elite fix the roads? Or why don't they do this thing that would be considered morally good? Or that thing that would be considered morally good? This is part of the reason why. Because helping the sheeple may seem like a noble thing to do on the outside, but resources that you're pouring into doing that you know somebody else in a similar position of power to you can take those same resources and promise their keys you know more selfish uh, you know we'll take better care of your families we'll you know more security so you know when you're in that position of power you have to make your decisions carefully and plus if you give the sheeple too much freedom too much education and too much you know resources then you know if they get intelligent enough to realize that if they band together they can topple you then that's a problem and what i always tell people you know outside of youtube is that science is not meant to enlighten science is simply made to make the sheep more productive slaves it's never meant to tell you guys the absolute truth just to tell you guys enough so that you're more productive in you know whatever endeavor you know you're you're in that's helping the elite so benevolent dictators can this isn't to say that these guys are evil because good and evil are human invented concepts it's just that it's a game and you got to know how to play it and sometimes the decisions that you make you know may not be considered uh, you know higher on the moral spectrum can spend their take on the citizens, but the keys must get their rewards, for even if you have gathered the most loyal, angelic supporters, they have the same problem as you, just one level down. Being a key to power is a position of power. They too must watch out for rivals from below or above. As above, so below reference. I love it. Anyways, that's why usually most images depicting the power hierarchy is a pyramid, right? Because let's say this little dot is the ruling elite, and then their keys, and then their keys, and then their keys, and then their keys, right? They have the same problem, just another level down. So it's a game. It's an endless game. It's a game within the game within the game that's derived from the ultimate game, natural law. So, and, and, and again, this is why, you know, you guys wonder why don't these people do more good for humanity? That's because it's a never-ending game of maintaining their power and keeping their keys happy, but not so powerful that they can dethrone you. Right. So, you know, the, the, the keys have keys and the keys of the keys have keys and the keys of the keys of the keys have keys. And yeah, it's uh, yeah, this video spot on so far. Thus, the treasure they get must also be spent to maintain their position. The loyal and dim may stay by your side no matter what, but smart key supporters will always watch the balance of power, ready to change allegiance if you look to be the loser in a shifting web of alliances. In countries where the keys are few, the rewards are great, and when violence rules, the most ruthless are attracted, and angels that build good works will lose to devils that don't. So buy all the loyalty you can, because loyalty 
Because at the end of the day, if you waste resources to help the sheeple, you know, do they help you? No. They'll, they'll take the free lunch. That's the thing about sheeple, man. They'll take the free lunch, but they won't be grateful for it. That's why if you're in a position of power, it's usually better to reward the people that can keep you in power instead of wasting it on ungrateful masses that, you know, will stay loyal to you even if all they have to eat is a fucking grass sandwich. So... Loyalty There's essentially no incentive to do the right to do the right thing a lot of the times. You know, I mean, right and wrong are human-made concepts, anyways. It doesn't exist in nature. And to get to this position of power in the first place, you got to understand the ultimate game, nature, the universe itself, natural law. Tutorial organizations of all kinds is everything for the ruler anyway. Thus, the dictatorship exposed, a king who needs his court to raise the treasure to keep the court loyal and keep raising the treasure. This is the self-sustaining core of power. All outside is secondary. Now, a king with many key supporters has real problems. Not just their expense, but also their competing needs and rivalries are difficult to balance. The more complicated the social and financial web between them all, the more able a rival is to sway a critical mass. The more key supporters a ruler has on average, the shorter their reign. Which brings us to the third rule. That's why I always respect the ruling elite because they've been doing this for thousands of years on the global scale. Like, it's... I mean, people think I'm intelligent, man. They, they have no idea what true intelligence looks like, man. I mean, com compared to the people that have been doing this for thousands of years, man, I'm a layman. Like, it's just one of those things, you know, if you don't run track... You don't understand how fast a four minute mile is, right? If you're on the outside looking in, you're just like, oh, that guy's fast, but you don't realize, all you know is that he's faster than you. You don't realize how insane a four minute mile is unless you're actually in the game. It's the same thing with the intelligence game, man. To a regular person, you know, somebody with an IQ of 150 would be considered a genius because they don't know who the real geniuses are, so. For rulers, minimize key supporters. If a key in your court becomes unnecessary, his skills no longer required, you must kick him out. After a successful coup, the new dictator will purge some of those who helped him come to power while working with the underlings of the previous dictator, which from the outside seems a terrible idea. Why abandon your fellow revolutionaries? Are the old dictator's supporters not a danger? But the keys necessary to gain power are not the same as those needed to keep it. Having someone on the payroll who was vital in the past but useless now is the same as spending Spending money on the citizens. Treasure wasted on the irrelevant. That's why if you guys observe very carefully, right, within dictators, people usually are not allowed to retire. People usually die or get removed or get arrested before they retire in dictatorships. I mean, really it's the same in free countries like America, right? You know, employers will do everything in their power to make sure you don't retire, to make sure they don't have to keep paying you for the next 30 years after you're useful. So, it sounds fucked up, but hey, man, you know, you gotta be strong to be at the top of this game, you feel me? And by definition, a dictator that pulls off a coup has promised greater treasure to those switching sides. The size of the vault has not changed, so the treasure must be split among fewer. A dictator that sways the right keys, takes control of the treasure, cuts unnecessary spending, kills unnecessary keys, will have a long and successful career. Seeing the structure unveiled, you might be excited to get started and control a country to the benefit this is why his story never, this is why his story repeats itself because the authors never change. The rule of the game doesn't change. Natural law doesn't change. The laws of the universe don't change and all of these games of power are just smaller variants of the ultimate game, nature, the universe, natural law. 
the main reason it always seems like rulers never learn their lesson or that it's a cycle or that history is repeating itself is because the core rules remain the same. To get to power, you need certain keys under your influence. To maintain that power, you need different types of keys under your influence. And while it seems like a noble thing to reward those that got you into that position in the first place with eternal retirements, again, the, the amount of resources and tools you have available has not gotten bigger, usually. And the amount of promises that you have to fulfill has gotten bigger. So you could do the right thing and try to give everybody an equal slice of the pie. Or you can do it intelligently and be like, the most useful keys get the most rewards. And the keys I don't really need anymore, I'm just going to get rid of them. You know? Again, this ain't a game about morality. This is a game about maintaining your power. You hear me? So of you and your cronies, or you might be exhausted, wishing to do good but seeing the structural difficulties, now turn to democracy for salvation. So let us discuss rulers as representatives. You again might have grand dreams of the utopia you wish to build, but no man rules alone, and never more so than in democracy. Presidents and prime ministers must negotiate with their senates and parliaments and vice versa, and they all have their own key supporters to manage. In a well-designed democracy, power is fractured among many and is taken not with force, but with words, meaning you must get thousands or millions of citizens to, if not like you on election day, at least like you better than the alternative. With so many voters and such fractured power, it's impossible to, as a dictator would, follow these rules and buy loyalty. Or is it? Of course not. And democracies are intentionally made complicated so that you never actually see who has the power. I mean, we saw this firsthand in Baltimore City in 2015. During the Freddie Gray riots, the mayor, who everybody assumed was in command of the police, she ordered the police to go and stop the, 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 the rioters, the looters, right? And the police said, fuck you, we're not doing it. And <laughs> I like that that happened in my own city because it made people really understand to some degree exactly what's going on. And that the people who you think have the power, the people who you've been trained since birth to believe has the power, the mayors, the governors, the presidents, etc., they don't really have the power. So when she gave that order to go and stop the rioters, one of the keys above or below her said, no guys, disobey the order. They're not treating you right, so don't do your job. You're gonna get paid anyways. Just watch the rioters do what they do. Shout out to the Baltimore Police Department. Don't think of citizens as individuals with their individual desires, but instead as divided into blocks. The elderly or homeowners or business owners or the poor. Blocks you can reward as a group. Democracies have wildly complicated tax codes and laws, not as accident, but as reward for the blocks that get and keep the ruling representatives in power. Farm what did I just say? It looks complicated to regular people, but it's supposed to be complicated for regular people because regular people are not even meant to understand this much. That's why I'm surprised this video is so accurate and has so many views because so far he ain't telling y'all nothing wrong, man. Farming subsidies, for example, have nothing to do with the food a nation needs, but entirely with how key the vote of the farming bloc is. Countries where farmers' votes don't swing elections don't have farming subsidies. If a bloc doesn't vote, such as younger citizens, then no need to divert rewards their way. Even and in the context of the global scale, if a specific portion of people don't influence a key, then there's absolutely no reason to care about them. You know what I'm saying? Like, I mean, the main reason in modern times you see so many resources being focused on the Gen Z population is because they're the most, they're the biggest population of humans right now, Generation Z. 
So keeping those keys under control is essential for maintaining your power because there's so many of them. But you don't have to make all of Gen Z like you. Just certain keys and positions of power, you just have to keep them on the same page. You don't necessarily need to tell them everything you know, but just keep them content enough to where they keep that block of people, you know, under your control and influence indirectly. So, and if Lar and that way, if anything goes wrong, they go and arrest the key instead of you, because these people never see who the real people behind the scenes are. Only the keys, if it's done correctly, you know. In number, they are irrelevant to gaining power, which is good news for you. One less block to sway, and the treasure you give your key blocks has to come from somewhere. If you want long years in office, rule three is your friend in a democracy just as much as a dictatorship. You can't eliminate those who don't vote for you, but there is still much you can do. Once in power, make it easier for your key blocks to vote and harder for others. Establish voting systems that reduce the number of blocks you need to win. This is my only point of contention with this video, and he has to he has to make it this way. But if people are actually voting for their leaders, most of the leaders who are really puppets, most of the puppets wouldn't be related to each other. You know, when me and my friends went down to D.C. and we visited a certain building, they had on public display. Here's all the presidents that are affiliated with each other. So. If people were really voting for their puppets, then all of the puppets wouldn't be related to each other in the same organizations. But hey, I'm not going to dabble on that point too much in this video because for the grand for the for the grand understanding and the purpose of this video was not necessary. And the more rivals you get, very handy indeed. Draw election borders to predetermine the results for you or your cronies, and have party pre-elections with Byzantine rules to determine who blocks even can vote for. Mix and match the ab Actually, shit, I take back what I just said. That's probably exactly how it's done, you know? They make it so that no matter who you vote for, it's always going to be one of them. So actually, never mind. I take back what I just said. He pretty much just nailed it down. But for even better power perpetuation. When approval ratings... I mean, shit, I remember a couple of years ago, people were saying that Biden and Trump both suck, and we just got to vote for the lesser of two evils. So... It never crossed the sheeple's mind to just band together and force them to put somebody that they want in power. They, I mean, people are so docile now that when they're given two shitty options, they think they're forced to pick one of the two shitty options when there's a third solution. Band together and force people to give you a better option. But you got to be strong for that, and people are encouraged to be weak nowadays. So be lower, yet re-election rates couldn't be higher, you'll know you've succeeded. Now, enough with thinking about the citizens. Even in a democracy, there still are very influential individual key supporters you need on your side, because their money or influence or favors keeps you in power. While you can't just promise to give them treasure directly, as a dictator would, you can create loopholes for their investments, pass laws that they've written, or print get-out-of-jail-free cards for their actions. Not a wheelbarrow of gold to the door, but contracts for their business. You as a ruler do have roads to build, or computers to maintain, or buildings to reconstruct. No man rules alone, after all. Or you could take the moral path and ignore the big keys, but you'll fight against those who didn't. Good luck with that. Corruption is not some kind of petty crime, but rather a tool of power in democracies and dictatorships. But more on that. A corrupt tree cannot produce good fruit, and in an unnatural society, government and society are two branches of a corrupt tree. So, but as he said, more on that later. Another time. So or, accept the favor. I'm not going to talk about that in this video, because for the sake of getting people to understand how the elite keep their power, it's not important. So. 
sway the key blocks and you will get into power, ruling with actions that look contradictory and stupid to those who don't understand the game, privately helping a powerful industry you publicly denounced, or passing laws that hurt a block that voted for you. But your job isn't to have a consistent, understandable ruling policy, but to balance the interests of your keys to power, big and small. This is why if you go to college to understand politics, if you go to school to understand the rules of the game, it's impossibly complex and all it does is confuses you further. But when you skip all of that and you go straight to the source and you see how things naturally are, all this becomes simple to understand. You got one guy who's like the head honcho, who's not really the head honcho, he's just the guy that has the keys and the keys allow him to maintain his power like when you understand that it's all essentially a tree right the roots grow and the branches are like the keys right because the because the branches are the ones that that the leaves grow on and the leaves are you know where the ants and insects come to forage on and you know then you start getting into the ecosystem and it sounds complicated it sounds complex but when you understand the ultimate game natural law this is all simple that's why no college in the world no no college in the world no religious institution in the world that's why none of these tools that's why none of these keys bother to educate people on you know, where the real power and real understanding comes from. Because again, the purpose of science is not to enlighten you. The purpose of college is not to enlighten you. The purpose of all these institutions that the Keys themselves founded is to make you a more productive worker, a more productive slave, give you the illusion that you're walking with them, when in reality you're being led further into the opposite direction. That way the keys can maintain their power and the people above them, you know, can maintain theirs as well. So it sounds complicated, but it's really not. That is how you stay in office. Now with all this headache of being a representative, you may wonder, looking at rule three, why couldn't you skip all this block building, favor trading nonsense and just bribe the army to take power? We must finally turn to taxes and revolts. You must understand rule two and how the treasure is raised and used to hold a country together. If we graph the tax rate of countries versus the number of key supporters the ruler needs, there's a clear relationship. More democracy, lower taxes. If you are sitting comfortably in a cushy democracy, you may scoff at this, but you are fellow citizens who don't earn enough, don't pay income taxes, and get rebates, bringing the average tax rate down. In dictatorships, this doesn't happen. Dictatorships often forego tax paperwork in favor of just taking wealth directly. It's common for the dictator to force farmers to sell their produce to him for little, then turn around and sell it on the open market, pocketing the difference at an unthinkably high equivalent tax rate. So taxes in democracies are low in comparison to dictatorships. But why do representatives lower their take? Well, cutting taxes is a crowd pleaser. Dictators have no need to please the crowds and thus can take a large percentage from their poor citizens to pay key supporters. But representatives in a democracy can take a smaller percentage from each to pay their key supporters because their educated, freer citizens are more productive than peasants. It's like what the fuck I just said. Education is not meant to enlighten you, but to make you a more productive slave. He basically just confirmed that in this video. See, this is why you have so many different types of government, because it's all the fucking game, right? In some situations, like when it comes to refining oil and minerals and natural resources, you really don't need educated citizens to do that type of hard labor. That's why the countries that have control over these resources are just direct dictatorships, but the dictators themselves are keys. I want you guys to understand that. The puppets themselves are keys. That's why in Iran and North Korea and shit, you have uneducated 
peasants mining the fucking coals or getting the gas out the ground, getting the trees off the ground because they don't need to be educated in order to be productive at their job. But when it comes to shit like electrical engineering and AI programming and making refrigerators, shit that actually requires a brain, you have to give, in order to make your workers productive in these fields and not have them just make shit that becomes a problem for you, you don't want to be electrocuted by your own refrigerator. So you have to give these workers enough education, not to the point where they become enlightened, but to where they actually become productive slaves, but they're still not a threat to you, the key or the ruler. So he highlighted perfectly what the fuck I just said. He just said it in a minute and I took 10, so. Four rulers in a democracy. The more productivity, the better, which is why they build universities and hospitals and roads and grant freedoms, not just out of the goodness of their hearts, but because it increases citizen productiveness, which increases... I'm gonna just keep it 100, man. Almost no ruler does anything out of the goodness of their heart. Every decision that the people that rule over you make, the long-term goal is more productive slaves more productive masses, they're getting better educated on how to be slaves, but they're being led further away from the truth on how to be free, you know, as above, so, but I mean, but I digress, bro. Treasure for the ruler and their key supporters, even when a lower percentage is taken. Democracies are better places to live than dictatorships, not because representatives are better people, but because their needs happen to be aligned with a large portion of the population. The things that make citizens more productive also make their lives better. Representatives want everyone productive so everyone gets highways. The you can get away with having democracies in certain geographical regions of the world where what needs to be produced there is different than what needs to be produced in areas where it's mostly gas and trees, etc. So, you know, you guys got to understand the game. You know, these people have been in power for a very long time. They're very intelligent, far more intelligent than any of you. They know what the fuck they're doing. So anytime you're watching the television and you're thinking, oh, these people don't know what the fuck they're doing. No, they know exactly what they're doing. Just because you're suffering from the Dunning-Kruger effect, just because you're not at the level to where you can understand, doesn't mean that they don't understand. And this is the biggest problem that blocks people from ever seeing the truth because they don't want to toss their ego aside and accept that there's very intelligent people in the world that understand natural law better than you and a lot of these people take their understanding of the universe and use it to seize all your resources and rule over you and continue to make y'all better, per, more productive slaves while pretending to do the opposite. It is what it is. Morality ain't a factor when it comes to this game, guys. Morality is a human invented concept that was taught to you guys to block y'all from seeing what's really going on. But I digress. I like the, I like the nice little sun hat he, he has too. I like all the references to the source here. This guy, CGP Gray, he knows what the fuck he's doing. Worst dictators are those whose incentives are aligned with the fewest citizens, those who have the fewest keys to power. This explains why the worst dictatorships have something in common, gold or oil or diamonds or similar. If the wealth of a nation is mostly dug out of the ground, it's a terrible place to live. What the fuck did I just say? Because a gold mine can run with dying slaves and still produce great treasure. Exactly. Oil is harder, but luckily foreign companies can extract and refine it without any citizen involvement. With citizens outside this cycle, they can be ignored while the ruler is rewarded and the keys to power kept loyal. Thus, we live in a world where the best, smartest democracies are stable, the worst, richest dictatorships are stable, and in between is a valley 
of revolution. The resource-rich dictators build roads only from their ports to their resources and from their palace to the airport, and the people stay quiet not because this is fine or even because they're scared, but because the cold truth is starving, disconnected illiterates don't make good revolutionaries. Now, a middling dictator without resources must, as mentioned before, and this is why people were made dumber than ever. This, you, I mean, you ever wonder why in 2023 we have more universities than ever, we have more education than ever, we have more people getting degrees than ever, yet people can't even tie their own fucking shoelaces? People can't even tell, people can't even do basic math, basic division? People can't even tell what a fucking man and a woman are? I mean, think about this shit, right? We got more fucking universities. We got more fucking college educated people with degrees, yet more people than ever can't even tell the difference between a man and a woman. This is done intentionally because as he just said, people that are uneducated don't make good fucking revolutionaries. And I got a video talking about revolutions on my channel. I might link that at the end. Before. take a large amount of wealth directly from his poor farmers and factory workers. Thus, two roads won't do, and so he must maintain some minimums of life for the citizens. But keeping the workforce somewhat connected and somewhat educated and somewhat healthy makes them more able to revolt. Now understand, the romantic image of the people storming the gates and overthrowing their dictator is mostly a fantasy. If you run a middling dictatorship, the people only storm the palace when the army lets them. Yeah, when you see a, a revolution, it's because one of the keys are getting replaced. And I got a whole video talking about this. That's why it's called a revolution. It's a never-ending revolving cycle. People don't get more free with each revolution. They get less free with each revolution. And he's about to talk about that. Because all that's happening is a key is changing. The actual rulers aren't changing. They're just replacing a key or two or three. To remove you because you lost control over your keys and are being replaced. This is why after popular revolts in middling dictatorships, the new ruler is often the same as the old, if not worse. The people didn't replace the king, the court replaced the king using the people's protest they let happen to do it. The very things a benevolent dictator wants to build to cross this valley take treasure away from the keys to power and make the citizens more able to revolt, often ending in a stronger ruler less likely to build bridges and more loyal to his keys. That's why, again, even in America, with each revolution, the people were less free than ever. You know, 200 years ago, if a police officer was doing something wrong, you could citizens arrest him and get some justice. But nowadays, go try to arrest a cop right now. You're going to get the shit beat out of you, and then you're going to get thrown in prison for a crime you didn't even commit. Yet people were taught that with each revolution, that with each protest, that with each paradigm shift in the keys, that they're getting more and more freedom, when in reality, they're getting less and less freedom. I saw a meme where an American cop was, was, he was dressed in a Nazi uniform and he's like, papers please, in reference to how if you don't give a cop your ID, they're gonna find something to arrest you for. So, and it's done like this on purpose. Again, there's more colleges, there's more people with college, and this is the thing, right? If everybody has a college degree, then nobody has a college degree. So you have more education, but people can't even tell the difference between a man and a woman. So how the fuck are they going to do a proper revolution and get somebody that actually gives a shit in a position of power? It's impossible. Honestly, the game was designed with impossible difficulty in mind. You were never meant to see what the fuck is going on. And if you do see what the fuck is going on, the people around you will think you're insane. And the people around you that don't think you're insane, they do one of three things. They go and join the elite and become keys themselves. They try to revolt against the elite at which they just usually end up dead. Or they kind of do what I do and just, you know, do their own thing. They don't really get involved. They just observe the situation and make videos like this. Or don't even talk to people at all. 
A lot of people that are around my level, they don't even interact with people at all. They gave up talking to people. They just said, fuck it. I'm going to live alone, be a hermit, and not interact with anybody. But I digress. On the other side, the best democracies are stable, not just because the large number of keys and their competing desires makes dictatorial revolt near impossible to organize, but also because the revolt would destroy the very wealth it intended to capture, the high productivity of the citizens. Plus, those helping the would-be dictator in a democracy know he plans to cull key supporters once in power. That's what a coup is. So potential key supporters must weigh the probability of surviving the cull and getting the rewards versus the risk of being on the outside of a dictatorship they helped create. This is a major reason why you see a lot of key people in power. They don't ever try to change anything because, you know, on the one hand, they could do the right thing and do what's right for the people. But if that fails, they're, not, they're just going to get the shit beat out of them, thrown in prison, and then executed later. So that's usually why, you know, the people that are born into power or the people that manage to, to get some type of power by understanding natural law, they kind of usually just let things remain the same because even if they want to start a revolution and change the way the world is, if they fail, which there is a very high chance they will, then one of these things happens. In a stable democracy, that's a terrible gamble. Maybe you'll be incredibly wealthy, but probably you'll be dead and have made the lives of everyone you know worse. The math says no. Being on the right side of a coup in a dictatorship means having the resources to get you and your family what the peasants lack. Healthcare, education, quality of life. This is what makes the competition for power so fierce. But in a democracy, most already have these things, so why risk it? So the more the wealth of a nation comes from the productive citizens of the nation, the more the power gets spread out and the more the ruler must maintain the quality of life for those citizens. The less, the less. Less. Now, if a stable democracy becomes very poor, or if a resource that dwarfs the productivity of the citizens is found, the odds of this gamble change and make it more possible for a small group to seize power. Because if the current quality of life is terrible, or the wealth not dependent on the citizens, it's very subtle to look at those stars. As above, so below. This guy gets it. Quality of life is terrible, or the wealth not dependent on the citizens. Coups are worth the risk. When democracies fall, these are usually the reasons. These rules for rulers explain not only why some men are monsters and others are merciful, but everything about politics, from war to foreign aid to political dynasties to corruption, all of which we can talk about at another time. But for now, you aspiring ruler may be disgusted by the world of politics and have decided to avoid it entirely. But you cannot, for rulers come in many forms. Yes, kings, presidents, and prime ministers, but also deans, dons, mayors, chairs, chiefs. These rules apply to all and explain their actions. From the CEO of the largest global corporate conglomerate who must keep his board happy to the chair of the smallest homeowners association, managing votes and spending membership fees. You cannot escape structures of power. You can only turn a blind eye to understanding them. And if you ever want the change you dream about, there's a zeroth rule you cannot ignore. Without power, you can affect nothing. You may not like these rules, but surely better you on the throne than someone else. And who knows, maybe you'll be different. On the internet, the I didn't mean to click on that, but absolutely not, absolutely not. You will not be different because in order to get to a position of power in the first place, you have to understand the ultimate source of power, natural law. The universe itself, nature. And when you understand the ultimate source of power, you then understand what is required in order to get, maintain, to get and maintain that power. So, no, you won't be different because in order to get to that position in the first place, there's a certain way you have to be. And in order to maintain that power, there's a certain way you have to be. So, to the people that, have, that keep asking me, 
you know, how do such a small group of elites manage to maintain their power on a global scale? This is how. Modify a few things he said, and then you will see exactly how things actually are. Each ruler of the country, they're just puppets, they're just keys. When these rulers change, it's just the elite change in the keys. You know what I'm saying? And how do they get these keys to be loyal to them in the first place? Rewatch this video or go watch that video directly. That being said, I think I covered all I needed to cover in this video. If anybody has questions, feel free to ask them and I will catch you guys in the next one. Peace.